Live from the Talking Joe Studios. It's Talking Joe. Talking Joe is on the air. Hey, hey, Mark here. I'm with Tim and Jay, and we're just dropping a mini podcast out there on Podcast Land just to wrap up and discuss some of the the news that's been been happening in, in the world of G.I. Joe because there's just been so much that has been going on in just uh, literally the last day. It's uh, it's ridiculous. Hot and hot. there's been uh, there's been a few big things we've seen some of the plans from idw about their forthcoming books celebrating the 40th anniversary of gi joe we've had hasbro pulse announcements of the upcoming figures we've had some uh, news clarifying the position of idw's publishing of gi joe and also uh the the dropping of uh the kickstarter for uh 3d joe's uh omnibus collection so uh it's it's everything in the space of just a few hours um where sh- where should we start tim what would you like to talk about first you guys should talk about the toys because i know you guys are both really into the classified line Okay, so so yesterday, as at time of recording, we had the Hasbro Pulse, and there were there were a few new figures announced. So I'll, I'll run through them. We had Baroness repainted uh, version of the one that came with the coil, looking a bit more like the classic uh, Baroness with without the uh, additional gold uh, sort of touches and so on. A uh, Destro repaint that's a bit more like his cartoon. A triple pack of Vipers, uh, Tomax and Zaymot, uh, repainted Lady J in a bit brighter colours. Gung Ho in his V1 uh, version, uh, colouring and, and a tweak to his accessories. And uh, Stalker looking it, sort of very drab in his, his colours. It might just be the uh, the image that they had shared on the screen uh, with a big old scarf around his neck. Uh, and then an extension of the retro O-ring line uh, with uh, with two packs uh, announced in, in their sort of classic 82 version one sort of veins. Well, not 82, 83, I guess. Uh, Cobra Commander and Duke sort of with, with colouring leaning into the the color the the cartoon colors and a double pack of uh, cobra officer and cobra trooper phew jay what was your reaction what did uh, what sort of made you whoop and holler when when you saw those the first thing is i'm very very happy that they went with the traditional um acrobat look for the twins i'm very <laughs> happy about that i was really afraid that they were going to uh try to modernize that or uh, you know, in this issue that we just read for um, Devil's Do, the, the twins are in there, and they're kind of in uh, just a really generic-looking bad outfit, you know, and, and no flair, no personality, you know. And you look at that compared to their their classic V one outfits, and you just think, okay, yeah, I know that the the classic is a little silly looking, but this is just boring, you know. I'd rather have the slightly silly with some flair than boring. So I'm very happy that we got uh, or are getting uh, the Crimson Twins um, that look faithful. And I hope that they're um, available as a two pack. Yeah, really want to see see the a two pack with the mirrored sides. That yeah. would be, I think, just uh, might be just kind of, It'd probably be about the size of the. Uh, well, I don't know. And and you know they weren't they weren't afraid to go with the gaping open uh, cobra mouth cod pieces as well so hey you know, yeah that great, means there's hope know. for dr mindbender <laughs> like getting to gung-ho I'm, I'm happy that we're getting gung-ho version one this has kind of been the pattern with the uh, with these figures they drop one that you go what well, who designed <clears throat> this and then you know a year later they drop the real one and you go well <laughs> all right thanks um see roadblock if you don't know what i'm talking about um, so gung ho, good. Happy to get happy to get traditional gung ho. Happy to get the twins. Stalker, I have been waiting 
since this line came out for Stalker. He's part of my holy trinity of Joes. It's it's Stalker, Snake Eyes, and Scarlet. And um, very, very happy to get Stalker. Very disappointed with the way he looks. Um, at least in that photo, it looked very drab. The scarf looks like it covers up his entire chest. And unfortunately, I feel like we've kind of seen this with some of the other figures when they put something on their chest um, and you take that off like Firefly with the big bomb vest, it it kind of leaves the chest area and the stomach area a little lacking. So I'm afraid that if we take that scarf off Stalker, he's not going to look that good. I'm just really wary of Stalker. Like I said, he's one of my favorites. And, you know, honestly, I feel like, how do you screw Stalker up? It's like Lady J. How do you <laughs> screw that up? He's a, a guy with a camo outfit and a beret. That's it. Period. I, th- I think I think there's a couple of things there on Stalker. I think probably the photo just looks darker than, than I hope it so. actually will be. I, d- I don't know if that will be representative. And and the scarf, um, I would think, is designed to be removable. Oh right? yeah, I'm sure but, it can can come so, off. I'm just hoping so it doesn't it look like he's missing but, something when yeah, you take it yeah. off. But but you know the tr- the vintage Stalker was a very very pared back design. Um, yeah, there wasn't an, was, awful, an awful an awful. I mean, the awesome too. thing about Stalker was. Um, you know, he was part of the original 13. He was the only one in camo. I mean, he was the only one really that, that stood out from the rest other than Snake Eyes um, and Scarlet. But uh, yes, I mean, but a very, very simple design. Just camouflage pants, camouflage shirt, one strap with a knife, one strap with a grenade and a bray. That's it. I've got a, I've got a question. Do. So these uh, these O-ring figures, I've seen the photos. I haven't watched, I didn't watch the video, the live video. Um, the images of Cobra Commander, Duke, Cobra Soldier, Cobra Officer, um, they look like uh, CG renderings. They do not look like photos yeah. of 3D objects. So do I take this to mean that these figures have been uh, re-sculpted? They look a little different than the originals. Um, I commented on somebody's post. I said, why is it that these pic- these figures look like they came from a third-party manufacturer rather than Hasbro? But like you said, there is a thing at the bottom of every picture that says this is just a digital rendering. The final okay, right. product may look different, but yeah. yeah, they just don't look great to me. They were, they're basically saying that that because of all of the you know worldwide supply chain issues and so on, um, they they wanted to to sort of share the hype and get us excited about what's to, to come and sort of let us sneak behind the curtain and see these digital renderings for for the, these characters before the in-hand product was available. So the these were all just the digital renderings and they didn't, in, at the reveal, they didn't have anything in okay. person which which they were showing off, which, which is what they've been been doing to date. Um, on, the, yeah, on, on the Cobra Trooper and, and uh, figures, I think it, you know, they, they were saying basically they, they were trying to keep as authentic as possible to the uh, originals. And, and, you know, the originals do look a little bit sort of derpy in their way. Um, hey, hey, you know hey, they, hey, hey. <laughs> the 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 you know the 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 heads the head sculpt particularly it sort of it, it, you know it, it it sort of it friendly it it's it looks slightly you know it it it, it looks different to, to the way that the line ev- evolved let's say okay uh, so tim i described it one time as what'd you say tim uh soft <laughs> kind of kind of cute almost like yeah they're they're army figures but like if you hold a figure like the original duke or somebody in your hand there's kind of a Oh, I don't want to say adorable, but there, you know, it's like if you, you hold like a, like a V1 stalker from 1982 and uh, you're in comparison to the 25th anniversary stalker, it looks like the, the 25th is like a statue, a, a military soldier and the 82 one looks like a toy. You know what I mean? There's a big difference b- between them, but I love them. I love the original ones. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying I don't love to them. get these. Don't ones. get me wrong. What don't I'm, get me wrong. What I'm sort of asking or stating, I'm asking for confirmation or stating that I find it really interesting is that I know over the years fans have figured out or Hasbro has admitted that a lot of old toys Hasbro no longer has the molds, can't make new editions of an old toy because the molds broke or they got lost. Right? They got lost because they were like licensed out to a foreign toy company or they're like thrown away or at the bottom of the sea or something. So what I'm asking here, or I think what I'm stating, I just find really interesting is that Hasbro 
seemingly here is making new molds so that they can make new figures that look 99% identical to the original figures. And I find that really interesting because I guess there were times um, in the like late 90s or early 2000s where with Hasbro might make a new mold um, from an original to- from a production toy. Mm-hmm. And so you, you get a little bit of generation loss. You know, it's a copy of a copy or to use a film term, like you have a film, you want to make more copies of it. You have to make an internegative from your print and then like your, your interpositives from your internegative. Um, so this thing that I don't know if we, but I've always sort of wondered, uh, why don't they just, I know it's expensive. I know it takes time. Why don't they just make a new mold for the original toy that doesn't, have that generation loss rather than uh, and I think that's what I'm seeing here and but then I sort of wonder if that's the case why not go in and add a little more detail or make some small adjustments to say Duke version one and the original Cobra soldier to make them more in line with the figures two or three years later because I feel like if we've got animation colors and the smoothness of the animation designs for the Super 7 reaction line, then either this new line of uh, 40th anniversary O-ring figures, uh, it's like either this should be like an exact replica of the originals or they should, if, if it's going to be like the cartoon, it's like, you know, like the new, there's a new comic book that's going to look kind of exactly like the cartoon. So make these kind of exactly like the cartoon. So I am happy they're doing this. But if they are, if they're replicas, but not quite replicas, I don't know. I don't, uh, I, yeah. I'm happy. I'm also... Uh, Wary? Well, it's it's like also if... I, I am. This, is, this isn't nice of me because it's not 1982 and the dollar doesn't go as far. But if I see a figure that's like a replica and replica <laughs> packaging of a toy from 1982 and it's, you know, $12 or $17 or $22, yeah. I have a little like that. That's sort of a barrier for me, even though I understand I'm not time traveling and buying a 1982 <laughs> object. And so, you know, like in the case of the reaction figures, it's like they're too expensive, but I understand. But like, OK, that's a different thing. If you if from far from across the room, you might think it's the original figure. Or like a brand new replica. How do you guys feel about the comic book news? So I think in terms of let's start with I guess the the, the sad news or or the more shocking news of of uh, IDW uh, losing the the license for GI Joe. So so that was sort of uh, leaked in a few places with a um, such as Bleeding Cool a, a couple of weeks ago, but uh, has now been formalized or confirmed in a, a Hollywood Reporter article which contains quotes from from IDW now and, and Tom Waltz has put out a tweet as as well sort of uh, con- confirming that uh let's let's read the let's read the blurb uh, a second at the end of 2022 IDW will bid a fond farewell to the publication of GI Joe and Transformers comic books and graphic novels the company said in a statement provided to The Hollywood Reporter. We're exceedingly proud of our stewardship of these titles, 17 years with Robots in Disguise and 14 years with A Real American Hero. And thank the Legion of fans for their unwavering support month in and month out. We're also eternally grateful to every one of the talented creators who helped bring these characters to life through our comics. And um, yet the uh, it's confirmed that um, on for GI Joe, the company is planning to uh, have a blowout celebration with the milestone issued 300, uh, and also with the newly launched GI Joe uh, Saturday Morning Adventures, and also with the 40th anniversary of the uh, of the brand. There are uh, several special projects also in the works to be uh, be announced. Yeah, so so I think I think it takes I think it takes takes us to about the end of end of yeah. this this year and the rumours as well is that Robert Kirkman's Skybound image imprint is in talks to to pick it up though this doesn't yet seem to to be uh, confirmed. I'm not really surprised that uh, the license is going somewhere else. I feel like 
IDW has done some great stuff, um, but they've all they've also had a lot of misses, uh, especially in terms of their GI Joe universe. It seemed like to me personally, everything went downhill really fast uh, after Cobra Civil War. And I mean, very short, like the last couple of volumes of the book and all the stuff with the, the crossovers with all the other Hasbro properties just left me not interested at all. I'm glad that they're, they're going to be able to go to 300 with a raw. And I was going to ask you guys, if you think that that'll be the last issue, what the last issue of IDW's no, the last um, issue of a raw will be 300. Oh, do you, do you think, do you think someone will pick it up after? I don't know. Is that that's your know. question? I mean, I think I'm pretty sure that it's probably going to end here. I don't know if anybody whoever gets the next license will try to get Larry to come and do it there. But I'm just wondering, what do you guys think? Do you think that it'll? Do you think they'll stop at 300? Yeah. They're not going to go to like 304, and then the next month they give the license up. I mean, they stopped Transformers Regeneration One at issue 100, okay. and uh, if you count the number of months left in the year it would be a challenge for idw to get mm. enough issues out to get to 300 and also get past it yeah because we're uh, going to be what two eight nine next so so yeah we've still got 11 you know 11 basically yeah. to get to oh boy so right on the line 300 so so yeah and yeah they're, they're gonna have to they're gonna have to probably double ship to to get to 300 um, and and you know like this this happens with with publishers who lose licenses or who are like wrapping up one story before like a big relaunch. Probably if issue three hundred is showing up in December, that also probably means that a one week later in December, like classic GI Joe volume, you know twenty eight or twenty seven is going to show up, which will have the final like ten or so issues in a yeah. in a soft cover because the the legality of losing a license. The, the legality of no longer having a license is that, you know, like mm. if it's if it's the calendar end of 2022, the, the licensor cannot publish anything on the first day of 2023. So it's not like, oh, yeah, you know, two, two months later, they do like a collection and then like a hardcover and then like the other hardcover that has more issues. Um, my my gut tells me. If if this had been like a nor if there hadn't been a pandemic, if the Snake Eyes movie had done uh, a little better, I think I would think a future licensor would continue with issue three hundred one. Uh, my gut sort of tells I would, me if Larry wanted to do it. Well, okay, so my gut sort of tells me that I feel like there's a good chance that whoever picks up GI Joe will do uh, two books, and yeah. one will be some other version of GI Joe or someone else's take on GI Joe. And one will be uh, this writer who's got such a long affiliation with it. And that like they'll both be issue number ones, because if you have the momentum of announcing your new license and getting everyone ready for it, like think of all the fans who have tried or avoided the IDW continuation of the Marvel run. If you say to them, like, let's say Hama is involved. If you say to them, like, there's a new issue number one coming in first quarter of 2023, they'll probably say, I'd like to try that. And if you say, there is issue 301, some of them <laughs> might say, well, that's really cool. And some of them might say, uh, do I have to read the previous 300 issues? And some of them will say, well, well I, don't, I didn't like the previous 150 issues from IDW. So even though it's new, I don't know if I want to. So I think just mm. for the clean slate of it, uh, it would not be 301. I, I do think that if Hama is asked to write a comic, generally, G.I. Joe or otherwise, he's a working professional. He's yeah. not retired. And like everyone, he's got bills to pay. And also, <laughs> I think he understands that if you if your name is out there with new work, then you can attract new fans or you can maybe get more work. More new uh, work, yeah. And so, uh, you know... Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, so I, I I don't think we'll see an issue three hundred one. I'm happy, really, that uh, that we're gonna, you know, that somebody else is gonna take a stab of it. Like I said, I, I wasn't real happy with the last several years of IDW, and I think just as a as a as a fan of different IPs, and this is something that we kind of brushed on in earlier episodes when we talked about, you know, when we were kids, we were able to read the comic 
and watch the cartoon. And there wasn't really, I mean, for me and, and most of the, the, the kids that I knew, um, there wasn't any confusion, you know, that why is Scarlet acting this way during the cartoon? And she doesn't act that way. You know, it's, we just knew they were separate things. You know, so anytime now, especially like a company loses a license, like Dark Horse, when they lose their alien titles or Star Wars titles or something, you know, you had this huge uh, issue with the fans saying, oh, well, now Disney's saying that all the stuff that Dark Horse made is not canon. It's whatever. Forget <laughs> canon. You know, it canon is what you like, what you remember. And like I've always said, my my canon for G.I. Joe is, is basically one to one hundred. And, and that's it. You know, a few things that I've read here or there after that. But that's really what sticks with me. I'm OK reading other stuff. But for me, that's that's my G.I. Joe. But I don't have any problem separating it out. So I'm always excited to see, uh, especially now, I'm, I'm curious to see uh, what's done with it. And I hope that Kirkman gets it because I, I do like a lot of his um, stuff that he's involved with. I'm excited about the, this new version of Silent Interlude that just got announced. Uh, in the yeah, last let's let's yeah let's talk about that. So Marvel has had some success in the last two or three years, where it takes a famous key or first issue, uh, like Fantastic Four number one, or uh, was it Avengers? It's like Avengers number four and Captain America number one hundred, I think, and have modern artists each draw one page using the original script. And Mm. then they can print it, they can publish it as this, you know, like $5.99, you know, like oversized issue. And people who like the original can get this new take on it. People who have never seen the original can read the original, but it's modern. People who don't want to read the original because it's sort of old fashioned, like, you know, Jack Kirby drew that in the 60s. Um, so it's sort of the best of both worlds. I like looking at them. I don't actually own any cause I think it's, um, they, they don't, they don't actually, I like the idea of them. I actually don't really want to read them because I, I, I would just want the original. I would want these, all these talented new people to do some new stuff, but Hey, yes, when you agreed. roll this, when you roll this formula over to my favorite thing, GI Joe, I, you know what? It's also, it's also a little distracting. Like, I think the whole idea of it is this artifice of, all these modern artists drawing, uh, redrawing like classic comics pages, but using the original layouts. Um, I think uh, it's, I don't know, it'd sort of be like if uh, if you went to a concert for your favorite band and like they were up on stage playing, but like somehow there was no sound, but then like standing next to you, like there were clones of all those like musical performers, like singing into your ear. So like it's sort of live and it's sort of new, but it's sort of the old thing. That that analogy doesn't entirely work. Anyway, <laughs> um, so like it's like oh, Steve McNiven is like redrawing a Jack Kirby page from Avengers Four, where like the Avengers find Captain America, and it's the Kirby layouts, but it's like modern twenty twenty one Steve McNiven's like very crisp art with like very uh, fancy computer coloring. I love it. It's also just sort of distracting. I can't actually like read it and take it in. It's just an object to look at. Yeah. Okay. So, but if you take this and you, you roll it over to GI Joe for me, like, Oh yeah, yeah. I'm going to buy five of these. (laughs) (laughs) Like, like what? Like Nitho Diaz and like Shannon Gallant. And, uh, I'm only guessing I I haven't, you know, like all these wonderful people who've drawn GI Joe and we keep interviewing them. And I keep saying, I sure love this person to come back and draw more issues at GI Joe. It's like, does silent interlude need to get redrawn and republished? No. Should we? Sure. Yes. Yes. I'm buying five for myself. (laughs) This isn't even like, so I can get a variant cover. It's like, no, I'm just buying five because when GI Joe hit issue 150, I just bought five copies because I was really excited. And then when it hit 155, I was excited and sad and I bought five copies. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be fascinating. It's it, obviously you can't you can't read it and experience it like a, a normal uh, sort of in inverted commas comic book because it's, you know, a comic we all know and love and also, you know, so familiar with as well, but um yeah, it'll be it'll be a fascinating to to actually see it and i think it's advertised as uh am i am i making this up 72 pages um, yeah it's gonna have essays by and, people yeah. and then a it's like a self-referential story by larry hama yeah so so yeah the the 
essays from people in, including uh lammy or uh, larry hammer it'll be um yeah excellent and, and hopefully um idw um will sort of have this you know last furlong of uh of their of their run of gi joe sort of dropping some you know really interesting uh projects for the 40th anniversary i hope hopefully we get get to hear about uh, a few a few more um, we but... we know that we've got these two uh eight dollar reprints these 100 mm-hmm. page reprints uh yojo and cobra which each is going to reprint it's a little hard to tell four or five issues of larry hama comics like best joe stories and best cobra stories they have both been solicited your comic book store can order them they both have new cover art we don't yet know what issues are in them yeah i find it a little bit harder to get excited about a a reprint of a comic that i already have i'm sure it will get get you know it'll find new readers who who haven't really who hasn't necessarily experienced those uh those comics in the the first time round yeah. my comment about the silent interlude um I'll get it because it is interesting, <laughs> but I would rather pay $150 for an artist edition of 21 than $8 for this. I mean, it's 21 is a perfect comic for me. You can't make it better. You know, I'm I'm still going to be looking at somebody's second best effort at a perfect comic. There is one uh, small way in which it's not it's not writing a historical wrong, but it is making what I think is a fascinating historical retroactive adjustment, which is that seemingly Larry Hama and Steve Lealoha are going to draw the cover for this. Oh, oh, nice. And they have only ever drawn interior pages of G.I. Joe together, plus a variant cover for issue 275. And, of course, Ed Hannigan and Klaus Jansen drew the original cover for okay. issue 21. This has many times been uh, miscredited as as Larry Hama pencils, right? But it's like in the letters page, two issues later, <laughs> that Ed Hannigan, who was doing a lot of covers for Marvel in the late 70s and early 80s, uh, Ed Hannigan penciled that cover. And so not that Hama like needs to somehow magically do the cover for this issue that he drew the interiors for that we all identify uh, him with, but neat. Neat. Yeah, absolutely. I missed that little detail when it was uh, announced. But, I mean, I but, think yeah, it's kind of cool that you're going to have essays and stuff like that and comments from the creators, other creators. That's going to be the the really interesting part to to hear um, how other artists and writers and stuff were influenced by it. I mean, that, that I think makes it a little more than just um, a reprint or please, please IDW put silent. What's it? Silent prelude. Silent Prelude. Yes. Yeah. What is please. That? Uh, I... It's so, okay. During the, actually we'll get there in our podcast. Devils do publish that six issue miniseries snake eyes declassified. Yeah. Which takes like all of the Hama Snake Eyes mythology and like strings together in chronological order with some new information. When that was reprinted in a soft cover, it had a new five page story only available in the soft cover, written by Larry Hama and drawn by Ron Wagner, hmm. which is a prologue to Silent Interlude. Very little happens. It's like sto- you know, Snake Eyes is on the C 130 before he jumps out of it for the beginning of. Um, but A, it's never been reprinted. B, uh, that soft cover is expensive because it didn't have a high print run. And because of this, people yeah. want it. And C, uh, when last year <laughs> IDW published a 48 page special reprinting issue 21 and also issue 21B, which was the toy pack and comic, and it was called The Complete Silence, <laughs> it did not include this prelude. Mm. So, uh this would be a good time to squeeze that in absolutely okay. yeah i really hope i that saw mark mention that online but i i didn't know what it was i'd never heard of it. i i asked ron wagner a couple months ago uh if he remembered doing it and he he didn't really remember doing it and <laughs> this is not to say that like you know ron wagner is like checked out on gi joe um because he has drawn like two issues gi joe in the last two two uh ten years I think this is to say, I think I was sort of wondering if he still had the original art uh, mm. because 
I'm assuming if IDW ever reprints this, they'll have to scan the original collection and then we'd get a second generation. Like, I, I don't know if they have like the color files that you'd print from the way that they do for all the disavowed issues. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But I was sort of wondering if, well, if Ron Wagner has the original art, you know, maybe they could get scanned and recolored. And uh, I was not asking him like, hey, can you go through everything, everything you own and find out if you have this? I was sort of asking casually, like, hey, do you remember this? And he said, uh, oh, not really, which is, I, I think it's a way of saying like, Hey, freelance illustrator who's drawn monthly comics for thirty years. Yeah. Do you yeah. remember I'm not five remember pages? Those five do, you, pages. do you remember yeah. five pages you drew around two thousand five? It's like, well, not right now, but if you hum a few bars, maybe I can maybe uh. <laughs> sing the song. So I've sort of meant to follow up, you know, if if those pages are like in the hands of a collector. Well, anyway. Uh yeah. even even the second generation scan, you know, I think that that that's better than nothing. Get it out there. Never yeah. been reprint, never been reprinted, as you say. And and the fact yeah. that, unfortunately, because a few people have talked about it, I think people start to get their hopes up. Like, oh, is it amazing? It's like, no, 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 no. It's it's just five pages. It's just like, <laughs> it's just like the first. It's bite just of cool. A, yeah, it's just the first <laughs> bite of a piece of cake. But like, <laughs> it should be out there. So like, don't get your hopes up, everyone. Just like include it somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. So. um there's that to look forward to. And then the, the other breaking bit of news was that literally just a few minutes ago, without too much fanfare, uh, the Kickstarter for the 3D Joes collecting the art of G.I. Joe omnibus hardcover uh, was put live on on uh, Kickstarter. And the amazing thing on this seems to have been that it's been fully funded. Not Well, it's re- met its uh, funding goal before... Carson actually got around to announcing that it was live. <laughs> so it's it's met its initial funding goal of, uh, what was it, £25,000. So that's uh, $35,000 within just the first few, uh, few minutes before it had even been announced. So this is uh, incredible wow. and sort of uh, hopefully a good sign that, that um, it will do very well. So... What this is, is uh, $100 gets you one omnibus hardcover, apparently limited to 2,000 copies, uh, 480 uh, pages, plus, depending on stretch goals, 12.5 inches by 13 inches, so so oversized. Uh, It's a celebration of the painted art of G.I. Joe, a real American hero. Every carded figure, vehicle, playset, poster, and peripheral product featuring painted art released from 1982 to 1994 with uh, all sorts of unreleased paint paintings um some bonus content and interviews and and uh, whatnot so uh, I'm, I'm sure um it will be uh yeah an incredible book and i think uh, any gi joe fan will be missing out if they uh, they don't go ahead and uh, get a copy of this cuz uh, you know what we know already from the the products that they've already released they're they're pretty uh, incredible as they are so uh, and this is an upgrade to that lots of new additional elements not including in the first book as well as rescans of uh, lots of the images as well to get them even more crispy uh, than than they were the first time around so um, I, I have will a... get on and back this very shortly. I'm on the page and it's sort of just ticking up by a few hundred pounds every every couple of seconds. It's wow. funny to see. I have a couple of those original volumes. They're they're nice and as soon as I saw. I was talking to Carson and he said something about, oh, we're going to we're going to do an omnibus one day. And I was like, sign me up. He said, I'm I'm there. I mean, I haven't backed this yet, but I, I fully intend to. I, I'll, I'll back it, too. I have I have the slipcase with uh, all the volumes. And Ooh, um, you got the maybe slipcase. maybe in six months when I get my hardcover, I will uh, for a discount sell my uh, slipcase complete soft covers to some sort of lucky fan who wants it, but unlucky fan who couldn't get or couldn't afford the expensive <laughs> hardcover. Well, Yeah, it's, it's worth saying, I, I think everyone who's listening knows what this is, but it's worth saying that uh, each of these images where Carson and one or two, a handful of other people get a boxed toy, like a mint boxed toy and light it very nicely, evenly, yeah. and then photograph it or scan the front of it and then meticulously paint out in Photoshop scratches and scuffs glare and um, price tags and it's a real labor of love like you have to be a really 
like loving, talented, anal, patient, <laughs> anal retentive, patient <laughs> yes. uh, person to to want to do this and then to do it. And, you know, if you've listened to our previous episode with Carson, Carson is very nice and is not doing this for money or acclaim. Yeah. He's just doing it because he wants to and like Joe fans really want it. Um, so uh, it's it's the feel good Joe Kickstarter of January 2022. <laughs> um, shall we wrap up? Uh, I guess I guess the final is the final bit of news. Speaking of silent interlude and that cover by Ed Hannigan and Klaus Janssen. Mm. Uh, <laughs> a week ago, the original artwork sold for a lot of money. Right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was exactly a lot of money. Uh, what was it like yeah. 312 or something finally it was uh upwards of uh yeah 300,000 I, I can't yeah. remember the exact amount but yeah 300,000 plus um, so uh, uh yeah some someone with some deep pockets uh, went out and and got it and um yeah if you want deeper than mine <laughs> yeah if you want to hear a detailed discussion about that you can you can check out the the Felix comic podcast uh where he talks to a uh, friend of the show, Gene, about uh, about that whole uh, sequence of events. He, he talks to him just before the auction and just after. So talk about what they think it might go to, what Gene might might do uh, in terms of you know putting in a bid and uh, how so it Gene actually didn't get turned it. out. He didn't. It was a little bit too rich for him. Um, mm. Yeah, I think it was almost double what he was uh, prepared to, to go for. Oh, so, golly. Um, uh, so unfortunately... Yeah, the the cover was not reunited with the interior pages. And, uh, hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's a crazy cuckoo uh, art market out there at the moment. We should we should note that uh, as far as we know, this is the most expensive GI Joe anything. <laughs> well, right? what did so. number one go for? Didn't the art for number one sell not too long ago? Uh, the inter- all of the interior art? No, just the cover for the original eighty two, oh, yeah. like a did- couple years ago. Uh, hmm. Three, four years ago, maybe the GI Joe issue one cover turned up in around about 2018, uh, and Metropolis Comics sold it privately. So we don't know exactly what it went hmm. for. It was rumored to go for around about 100 to 125 thousand. So don't know exactly when it went for, but but yeah, just goes to show how the mar- you know the comic book market has oh, yeah. for for original art has just gone cuckoo bananas in the last few. And 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 I mentioned sort of GI Joe anything right? Like I, I haven't followed uh, like the auction houses that sell movie props, but you know in the last ten years, like you can buy costumes and props from these three GI Joe movies. Like toy art sells privately between collectors, like a real American hero, nineteen eighties, you know, paintings for figures and packages, comics pages and covers sell. Uh, CGC, like, you know, mint condition toys sell. Uh, as far as as far as we know, this is the most expensive G.I. Joe anything. This is the most expensive G.I. Joe sale of an object. Yeah, I think even a real life, life hiss tank might struggle to get that kind of money. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So so that is all the news that's happening in the world of G.I. Joe uh, comics this, <laughs> this week. All the news that's fit to print. <laughs> and some that isn't um so uh i think that is us done on the news front so let's sign off um yeah if you know if you want more of the same less less news and more about uh, a deep dive into what's going on in the world of the gi joe comics we're continuing our look at the ara issues as they come out and also the uh, devil's due comics we're, we're doing our deep dive back into devil's due history we started with issue one from 2001 and we've made our way up to issue 27 or so now so um join us for that all of the details are over at talkingjoe.co.uk so let's do a quick sign out with our regular sign out it's uh, us done but remembering that nobody beats talking joe a real American podcast with guys from all over the place. Later, guys. <laughs> <laughs>